question this morning is do we take our salvation seriously? Do I take my salvation seriously? There's uh, so many stories in the Bible that explain to us fear and a healthy fear. And there's also judgment in the Bible that the ultimate judge is God. And we should have a healthy fear. And we should live our lives according to what is taught us in the book of the Bible. And uh, yesterday I was at a, a competition where there was, uh, there was three different judges. And uh, there was a lot of fear in me there. I was worried about, you know, passing what they were doing. And, and uh, I, w- I had that fear of just, just in those three judges. And, uh, you know, I think of Eli and I think of other individuals in sports. And, you know, they're, uh, they're shooting baskets and they're making them in practice. Or they're, or they're hitting a base hit in practice. But when it's time to the game, t- game time, when you're having to do it in front of everybody... And you're having to make that free throw or you're having to get that hit or whatever you're doing in, in your competition, even if it's giving a speech or, or anything like that, there's somebody judging you. And, uh, and the ultimate judge is God. And we need to have a healthy fear. And we need to take our salvation seriously. I'm going to be reading a couple scriptures this morning. And the first one is uh, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And this is the warning from Israel's history, what the Israelites, what they did after Moses brought them out of, the, out of Egypt. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under a cloud, and they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food, drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock, that accompanied them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were as it are written. The people sat down to eat and drink and got to indulge in pagan revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angels. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us and whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, Be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. And there is a way. I'm going to be reading also in in Ephesians 6, and this is about the armor of God. And God wants us to use him. He wants us to use him. He wants us to use the full armor. So finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Would you pray with me?